Okay, today I want to show you some tips and tricks on the use and setup of Google Classroom with distance learning. Some of the things I've learned over the past year, uh, some great tools that help streamline some of my grading, uh, as well as uh, some ways to set up your classes so that it is easier for students to understand where to go uh, and where to find assignments. First thing I'm going to start here is on my classes page. If I click on the to review link up here, uh, this is a great tool that will summarize all of your assignments uh, in all of your classes and gives you a good review of how many things have been uh, assigned and turned in and graded. And you can also change how many classes or which classes being shown right then rather than all of them. Uh, another tool on the main page here is calendar. If I click on that, it pulls all of my assignments from all of my classes again and puts it on the calendar based on due date. Uh, kind of a nice way to just see an overview of all assignments from all classes. On each one of my classes, there's also a shortcut to the grading uh, gradebook within that class uh, and a shortcut to the Google Drive folder that will contain all of your assignments and student work. Uh, just a nice, quick, easy way if for some reason you need to see it directly on Google Drive. Down here in the left corner is the Help Center where you can see any sort of new features that have been pushed out. Google Classroom likes to push out new features uh, all the time, and uh, that's a great way to get some help on them. You can also request features uh, and updates. Uh, they are very responsive to teachers, and that's a great way uh, to submit your feedback directly to Google, uh, as well as a couple of different ways to receive help or ask the community where other uh, community members will respond back to questions that you have uh, about something within Google. And the final thing I'm going to do here on the classes page is I'm going to click on the menu and scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm going to find this settings and this will affect all of my classes all at once. When I click on settings, uh, there's not a whole lot to do on here other than notifications. And this is huge if you are finding that your email is being inundated with notifications from Google Classroom. This is where you can fine tune what classes are showing you uh, notifications or are emailing you notifications. Uh, I use commenting, especially with distance learning, and I uh, like to be able to receive an email so I don't miss comments. So I have those turned on for posts and private comments on work. Um, but you can adjust these based on your need and what you're finding within your classes. Uh, and that is the main page of your Google Classroom. Next, we're going to go ahead and drill deeper into the actual class. Okay, within the actual class, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is adjust some settings uh, to make this a little more user friendly for my students. So I click up here in the top right corner with the gear. And the first thing I like to do is I like to change my section number if it is a defaulted number. Um, mine was imported from my SIS system, so I had a, a random number assigned to it. Uh, but with distance learning, uh, depending on how students are expected to come into your classroom, mine are expected to be live within my class every Tuesday and Thursday and Monday at a particular time. This works great if all of the teachers in your school use the same format. That way it will populate the student's dashboard with a bunch of classes with the exact times and days they're expected to be there. I also usually change my class name to include uh, a period number. Uh, I shorten it down so I can see it on my front page, otherwise longer names uh, tend to get cut off. Uh, as I scroll down here, there's a couple other things I like to change under the stream. Uh, generally, it is defaulted so that students can post and comment on your stream. Uh, I almost never use that option. Uh, generally, at the beginning of the year, I will put only teachers can post or comment. And once I've had a discussion about appropriate commenting, I will turn on students can comment, uh, especially with distance learning. That's a great way for, for students to communicate to each other or to you or to ask questions of the class. Um, the classwork on the stream, I change this from condensed is usually the default to hide notifications. Uh, and what that does is when you are posting assignments, you want those to just appear in your classwork tab. 
But if you have this turned on, it will also shoot out a notification on the stream, which tends to make the stream very uh, messy and overwhelming. Uh, I like to train my students to go into the classwork for their actual classwork and to go to the stream for announcements and updates and agendas and things like that. Uh, the final setting on here that I will adjust is grading. Uh, although I do grade on Google Classroom, I do not want it to calculate a student's overall grade. So I make sure that this says no overall grade. Uh, their overall grade is calculated in my gradebook system, uh, and that's the one I want them to get used to looking at. I don't want them to look at the one on Google because uh, they may not match. And when I'm done with this, I go ahead and click Save. The first screen that students see when they get into your classroom is the stream. Uh, on this page, you should be posting uh, announcements and agendas or videos that you want them to see. I use this generally as a uh, streaming kind of daily board of my agenda for that day or for the week. Uh, if I scroll down here, I have a video that uh, at the beginning of the week, I'll push out to students, giving them uh, me showing them uh, where things are within the classroom. Uh, that way, if they didn't catch it during my live stream, they can always refer back to that video. Uh, things on the stream just go in order of when you've posted it. You can't move them around. Uh, it works similar to Twitter, where what the newest item is at the pop top of the stream. Uh, on this screen also is an upcoming uh, the students have something very similar to this. If you click on it, it's going to take you to your review page uh, that you can get to also from your main site or your main page. But for students, it takes them to a to-do list. Now, what's interesting is if you have something that is missing from a student, it disappears from here. Notice it doesn't say missing. It says upcoming. So if it's due today or beyond, it shows up on here. Uh, if it's already past due, it disappears. And I, I see a lot of students get kind of messed up by that because they look over here and they say, oh, nothing's due. And they forget to look at all the things that are past due. Um, now, the stream, I do not put any assignments on here. This is meant to be just sort of informational only. Uh, it's the first thing students see. Uh, I have my students uh, get into the habit of clicking on classwork to see anything that has to do with the classroom. Uh, if it is an assignment or a class resource on here. Uh, first thing I want to point out is when you are creating things, you have a couple of different types of things but uh, or items. Materials shows up for students on their side as purely not due. Uh, it doesn't have a due date on it, so it doesn't show up in their to-do list. It doesn't uh, kind of make them nervous that it's popping out as bright red uh, as being missing. Uh, so use material uh, the way it's intended as just uh, a reference material for them to come back to. Assignments, when you create those, one of the options that assignments has is a due date. So when you create assignments or quizzes or questions, uh, make sure you include a due date. That way, when students are trying to be efficient and streamline, especially with distance learning, those due dates will populate that assignment in front of them and then also change colors uh, when it becomes missing so that they can easily see, oh my gosh, I'm missing all these things. Uh, if you don't put a due date on there, they never show up as having been missed and, and it's easy for students on their end uh, on distance learning to, to miss those items, even if they're listed here. Uh, the uh, second recommendation is to use topics. I've broken mine into my units. Uh, I've seen teachers break them into weeks and have weekly units. Uh, and it has a couple of topics and it has a couple of advantages. Uh, not only does it keep your, your overall classwork organized, but it allows you to pick these up and move them. Right, so I have class resources here at the top, and these are just things I want students to be able to easily get to. But uh, halfway into the semester, this is going to become a very long stream of classwork, uh, and it's going to be real hard to find things if you're not organizing them. I try to keep the most current uh, topic at the top. Uh, even if it gets pushed down, I can pick the entire thing up and push it here to the top. What that also allows you to do is any assignments that you've created or even materials, uh, if you have them within a topic, you can also reorder those. Uh, if you don't have them within a topic, they will just be pushed to the top up here, like I have these two things. 
and basically be pinned to the top of your classwork page. So I have my agenda and my website uh, shortcut pinned to the top, and I do that by not putting them inside of a topic. Uh, also, as a, a tip, I'd like to number my assignments, and I number all of them throughout, uh, so not even just within a topic. I number them starting at assignment number one on day one, and there's a couple of reasons to do that. Uh, one, since you can move these around, it doesn't necessarily help it stay in order, but it helps you keep them in order uh, in your mind when you have all of your assignments on distance learning on Google Classroom, it may be a little confusing of what order you put things in. The second advantage it has is as students are trying to find assignments, it's a little hard sometimes to give them the entire title of the assignment, especially if they are very similar assignment titles. Uh, instead, I just say assignment number nine, and they can do a control F, which will do a find on page on a Chromebook or a Mac uh, or on a Windows machine and I do uh, pound sign number seven and it will find assignment number seven or if they're missing assignment number nine they type that in and it finds them for them. It's a really nice quick easy way for you and for your students to be able to find assignments in what will eventually be a long list of assignments. Uh, another way to do that, a little tip over here, is these three buttons. If you can copy that link, it will be something you could message or email to your students and say, right here is your assignment. It will jump them right into that um, and make it real easy and clean for them to find it. Uh, one final thing here on your classwork page, you do have a link to the Google Calendar specifically for this class, as well as the Class Drive folder. Those things were also on that main page. Um, so hopefully these tips and tricks will help, help you organize your class and get it started for the year uh, with distance learning.